So what we've got is a high probability that our money is going to be worth less. Asset prices are going to rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. We've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Bitcoin finishes this cycle closer to 250,000. I think a lot of people are lower. I think it might be higher because of the dynamics of the ETF and other stuff. I'm pegging Ethereum between 15 and 20,000. And I'm pegging Solana between 750 and 1,000. After enduring weeks of post that sell off turbulence that briefly drove Bitcoin below the $39,000 mark last month, the leading cryptocurrency appears poised for a significant rebound. Despite several lackluster days hovering just above $40,000, Bitcoin surged by $11,000 on Monday, only to experience a temporary setback. However, Wednesday marked the start of another promising ascent, with the cryptocurrency rapidly climbing to nearly $48,000 per coin, according to data from Coin Market Cap. Over the past week, Bitcoin has recorded a gain of over 10%, with a 4.77% increase in the last 24 hours alone. Experts anticipate an even more substantial rally in the coming weeks, leading up to the highly anticipated 2024 having event in April. Real Vision founder and CEO Rahul Pal a former Goldman Sachs executive, predicts a staggering 431% increase in Bitcoin's price before the current cycle concludes. His projections for Ethereum and Solana are even more bullish, expecting gains of approximately 700% and 8.5%, respectively, before the cycle ends in 2025. In his latest interview with Wethan, a renowned macro analyst, Pal discusses the reasons behind his bullish outlook on cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, not just for the current cycle, but also for the long term. He highlights the role of central banks in driving more individuals towards cryptocurrencies before the year concludes. Watch the video until the end as Pal elaborates on his optimistic stance on crypto in 2024 and the broader implications for the market. So I'm going to give two levels. The first, the very, very big picture level is the world is awash with debt. Global debt is 400% of global GDP. These are bananas numbers. So what does that mean? We talk about debt a lot. What it means really is the collateral, the assets that back the system have lots and lots of people claiming on them. So if anything goes wrong, you get a fraction of your money back. Also, we're learning that banks are now bailing in creditors. So you find that the issue in the leverage world is you actually don't think, whatever you think you own, you don't actually own. It can be taken away from you. That's the real issue we're trying to solve here at a very top level, is how do I keep that recorded ownership of what is mine and what is yours, and don't pollute them because some third party uses them for their own means. And then before you know it, nobody knows anything. But the other big change was obviously the internet. So when I got into this journey, the internet was around, but it wasn't the scale of what it is now. We're now creating these global nation states that are digital, that operate outside of the US or the UK or Europe. And they need a system of, as we get more digital, each day our lives get more digital. Digital assets now have value. This digital infrastructure is much more efficient at moving stuff around and recording the ownership. So if we now go to this system where in the United States you buy a house and it gets stamped and go to a notary and then it get recorded in a registrar, this can be instantaneous everywhere and nowhere and always verifiable. So it, it's really the operating system for the digital age. And without it, it kind of doesn't function. It's all a bit clunky. But with this, instantaneous settlement, recorded ownership, and transfer of everything. So it's kind of at three levels. Firstly, people understand that the system is broken, and they're looking for answers. Some people choose gold. Some people look, choose Bitcoin. People use different ways of, of getting around this. They can feel it. It's all around you. You can see it with populism. You can see it with just how markets react. So there's this feeling that I need to find an answer here. A lot of that is being driven by, we know there's all this debt and I'm scared of it. Okay, that's good. The other thing is, what is the answer 
that the central banks chose, or the governments. It was create more money. So you've got this macro backdrop of debt and this fear. So that's driving adoption. And then people are finding new use cases, like NFTs for smart contract stuff. That's creating a technology adoption like anything, like the internet was. And it happens to be the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen, except AI, which has been faster. So those two things are driving the movement of crypto. So the crypto price is based off those two issues. The adoption of the technology, as everybody's starting to build on this new tech stack, and because it solves a lot of problems, and then it's the thing that the central banks are doing, are devaluing your currency all the time. That creates a super mega trend within this. Now, it, as a space, is growing on average, including the bear markets, which are brutal, as we all know, it's growing at 100% a year as a space. So there are 516 million wallets as of end of last year, active wallets. If it's growing at 100%, by the end of this year, it's a billion. Then the end of the year after, it's 2 billion. Because So the numbers are vast as people are adopting it. Now, the difference here between this and the internet or the mobile phone is we were users of the internet and mobile phone, but we didn't make money out of it unless you happen to own the right shares. But nobody could own the infrastructure of the internet. Different parts were. Here, you can actually own the thing by owning a token. This is the first global homogenous investment product the world has ever seen that can operate like this. So it's the same product. Bitcoin is Bitcoin in India as it is in Nigeria, as it is in London, as it is in Hawaii. It's the same thing. Indian investors can't trade Tesla shares. Yes, they can trade gold, but they don't have access to it because you have to go to the to the to the store and buy gold jewelry and you've lost a lot of the the markup within that but here anybody can get a wallet because it's on the internet and you can send money home to your mother in the philippines from the united states instantaneously and by just owning one of the tokens an ethereum token or whatever it is you've got a share of it so if more people adopt it you get richer this is like one of the greatest schemes the world has ever seen in creating Mass wealth, not for Wall Street, but for retail, who got to front run all of this and create a new system that solves the problem of what's the investment, uh, the, what the central banks and governments are doing and solves the problem of an over indebted society. I mean, that's how big it is. What does your portfolio look like right now? What moves are you making and what advice for this year ahead for the markets? So, my advice is. I spend a lot of time, I haven't talked a lot about it, but I spend a lot of time looking at the macro economy and what is going and where it's going to drive assets. And my view is that the issues we've been talking about, printing of money, excess debt, are going to be the feature of the next two years. How do you pay for that? And so therefore, I am very aggressively positioned in crypto because the only other secular trend there is, I can divide any assets like the S&P 500 or real estate or gold by the central bank balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet, i.e. how much money are the Fed printing or putting on their books. And most of them are pretty flat line. Then you look at the NASDAQ and it's going up because there's, we're getting more digital every day, so there's endless demand. And then crypto goes up exponentially, as we know. So the fastest race, a horse in the race is crypto. So I'm actually 100% of my liquid net worth in this. And I have been actually for since 2020. And I use the bear markets to add into, because I think we are in a once in a lifetime wealth accumulation opportunity for everybody. Be you rich or poor, you can still put 10% of your savings in as you go. And so, so I, that's how strongly I feel about it. It's not just a passing interest. It's not something I say on TV. It's something I actually truly believe in. So Bitcoin, where is it in 18 so months? I don't like making these predictions because both people like you and I get beaten up over the head with it and said, why didn't it happen? Yes, you said it. I made, I, yes, yes. I, I, I've made a lot of wrong predictions, which is why I want you to be wrong as well. I'm kind yes. of thinking Bitcoin finishes this cycle closer to 250,000. I think a lot of people are lower. I think it might be higher because of the dynamics of the ETF and other stuff. I'm pegging Ethereum... Right between 15 and 20,000 and okay. I'm pegging Solana 
between seven fifty and a thousand. Wow. Okay, there's big move for for uh, yeah. So I think it's the relative uh, outperform. Uh, so my view is Bitcoin right. starts the cycle and outperforms in the start. Then people go out the risk curve. ETH. We're going to have an ETH ETF. We'll see the market pick up there. Right. But the horse right. that's moving faster is the one that's coming from a smaller adoption base. It moves yeah. faster.